Oh. Marvin, I heard you had a power cut. Yeah. Get it sorted, mate. Go and live next to a fucking hydroelectric dam, will you? Yeah, where's your backup generator? Yeah, we've, we've got a bloke in main building who does an uninterruptible power supply. You should you just speak to him. Dennis, his name is. Really nice bloke for a ginger. He might charge you 50 grand for the pleasure, though. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, I, I want to kick this off with uh, cracking open a lovely tropical IPA. Oh. Is that a beer, is it? It's an IPA. India Pale Ale. Yeah. Off-tempo tropical IPA. What's the percentage on this bad boy? I don't know. 3%? 5.8. Is that one yeah. of your gay fucking beers that you get delivered every month? Uh, no, this one's from Tesco, but yeah, it could easily have come in that box. <laughs> oh, oh, we all like to come in a box, don't we? It, well, we do, we do. It's a good drop. And do you, do you know, you well, I know you know the reason why I'm drinking. You're celebrating. I am celebrating getting my vaccine. You are. Yeah, well, I, I, you should celebrate. And it's also kind of commiseration because it's your last day of being neurotypical. Because tomorrow you're going to wake up <laughs> autistic. <laughs> I definitely am. Vaccines make you autistic if you believe these conspiracy fucking dickheads. See, I walk around just trying to get as many vaccines as possible because, uh, you know, I want to be like you when I grow up. <laughs> okay, no, you don't, mate. You really don't. Uh, it was quite oh, the... strange, though, getting the vaccine, John. Um, yeah? Yeah, yeah? Yeah, tell me I, about it. Yeah, so massive long queue. Um, I was the youngest there by far. I'd say the the, the next youngest after me was 50. That's actually um, quite worrying though, isn't it? Yeah, it is. That should worry you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The queue was fucking massive. The, the local doctors were doing 900 people that day. Socially distanced, I hope, the queue. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which made it appear even bigger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it was backed all the way up. We're only a little island. Uh, so 900 people. Uh, it went very quickly. It was very efficient, but it, it, was, it was surreal. After, after I got the jab, I felt like a weight had been lifted that I didn't even know I was carrying. Uh, for yeah, those yeah. who don't know, I'm immunosuppressed. So when the vaccine first came around, I was, I, I, I've never been more scared in my life. Uh, it might sound dramatic, but I've dealt with several surgeries. I've had my, you know, thigh completely cut in half and reconstructed. My hips fake. Um, I've had metal clamps put in all in my knees and then taken back out. You're just but, fucking greedy, aren't you, really? Yeah, I've, oh, I've had two lots of eye surgery. Fuck's uh, sake. One, I tell you, the worst surgery was um, when they cut my thigh in half. I had a, I was meant to have an epidural. Uh, it fell out on my back, so I woke up screaming nice screaming with agony i had no painkillers i'd woken up from surgery where my thigh bone had been cut in half put back together with metal plates and rods okay um, yeah not fun but anyway got the vaccine huge weight off my shoulders i wanted to do a dance yeah but you can't because your legs fucked <laughs> exactly <laughs> yeah because we, we although i'm a lot older than you um i we're not particularly i mean i'm, I'm asthmatic barely but we're not high risk, so we we are right in the last tranche. So we won't. We, we're looking at September, August time, um, which is fine because we're we're not only we're not high risk, or we're not in a high risk area either. And the chances of us catching it, I mean, just today, I went to the supermarket, fucking dead, um, towns dead, roads dead, and that's the only place I go. And funny enough, talking about vaccines and autism and queues, for the very first time ever. I mean, it, now because they've got these queues systems initiated. Um, they also allow vulnerable and elderly people in early. You can just go straight to the front of the queue. And I asked them a few weeks ago, does that include autistic people? I said, yeah, sure, no problems. So this morning, for the first time since I asked that, I went up to the uh, to the queue. And it's fucking right around the corner. There's, there's probably 20, 30 people in there. There's, there's a good 10 minute wait. So I just fucking swanned up. I got my autistic, my as I am IE, which is the autistic charity over here. Got my fucking autistic ID card up. Fucking flashed it now. McCulloch, autism special ops. <laughs> right you are, sir. Fucking sashayed in there. Probably got dirty looks, but hey, the great thing being about autistic is you don't fucking notice these things. Well, they've all got swan then, you know, look at me, guys. In front of the queue, I'm fucking special. And they've just proved you are letting me in early. Well worth it, I tell you. See, the thing is, in your head, you, you thought you was like James Bond flashing the ID. Fucking oh, was. I know. Okay, Mr. McCulloch. But really, they're just going, look at that poor short sod. 
Look at that fucking short, bold, middle-aged autistic fucking hermit. Let him in. He'll be all right. He's just going to go and buy his single fucking bottle of Guinness and be nursing that all weekend on his own. He's playing <laughs> on his little breath. farm. <laughs> but yeah. I could, apparently, I'm also entitled to a blue badge, you know. Yeah, I'm going to get one just to piss people off. I don't need it. On the contrary, I like, I like to park a long way away from the building because one, I like walking, and two, it keeps me away from people. But just have a blue badge just to piss people off, you know? It'd be great. But You're not fucking disabled or anything. I am. <laughs> it, it's good to have in a uh, tough situation if there's, I don't know, sparse parking somewhere. Just yeah, park sparse parking. Get stopped by the police. Oh, I'm, I'm disabled. Look, look. You can't be nasty to me. Got to be nice. Blow it off. Blow it off. Blow it well, I've actually had people, because, you know, that it's very non-PC to ask, well, you're not allowed legally to ask what people with disability is. Um, but I've actually had people say to me, you don't look autistic. Now, that invites a punch oh, in the throat. That yeah. actually invites a punch in the throat, you know, because it, what, what the fuck do you mean? I mean, I do look autistic because, look, I am autistic and this is what I look like. <laughs> By definition, I look fucking autistic, you moron. My response to that is always... Keep a straight face. I'm not aggressive or anything. I keep a straight face. I say, well, you, you don't look like a complete fucking idiot, but hey, here we are. Well, that, that gets a response. It's usually a kind of shocked silence. The last time it happened was in a lift in the States, and the entire lift went silent. I mean, they're quiet anyway, but people just looked at the walls. They thought, fucking hell, this could kick off into a fight, you know. Because, you know, you don't look like a fucking idiot either, but hey, here we are. <laughs> anyway, what are we talking about today? Oh, how I'm attract the top draw clients. Very fitting. Very fitting. Oh, he's got to turn this fucking fan eater off. You turn that fan eater off. The reason we're talking about uh, how to win the top clients uh, today is because in the world of construction, there's a ton of fucking work out there. Yeah, the shit load. But everyone's but busy. Everyone's busy and everything's just been done in price. Yeah, that's the problem. I mean, work is easy to get. Um... Two reasons for that. One is there's a shitload of people not spending money on things like going out, holidays, diesel. I mean, we, we are, we'd normally fill up with diesel at least once a week, 50 euro a week. Now a tank of diesel for the last three months. Yeah. So people have got much more disposable income and they're buying shit. And a lot of that includes kitchens, bathrooms, bedrooms, extensions, renovations, shit like that. So there's loads of work out there, but there's also loads of people to do it. And a lot of these people are new subbies because they've left the subcontracting businesses they work for because of things like being laid off and all, all that kind of stuff. That's out on their own. And all they know how to do is compete on price. So it's almost, you can't imagine a more perfect storm. Loads of work, loads of people wanting the work. And because of that, they're willing to compromise on the only thing they know how to do, which is the price. They don't know any other way to do it. Now we do. Now this this is what we do. This this is if, if in eighty twenty terms, meaning the top few things we do to help business owners of all kinds from all walks of life by more money, less work, less hassle, fewer headache is premium pricing, premium positioning, getting the better clients, charging more money. It is that fucking simple. So pay attention to what we say in this podcast, and also join us. We'll say more later that we're doing a webinar on Wednesday, twenty seventh of January. Join us for that. It's on the same topic. But it'll be more structured than this. So, this—I mean, if you only listen to this podcast and went to that event, that could change your life and business dramatically for the better. So, how, you know, how to get better clients, you know? the best clients? What we do, it, it, there's kind of six different steps you need to go through. And the first is you just decide who you want to sell to, who, who you're selling to, because you know, are you going to be the equivalent of the PT like Phil used to be, standing in the gym training someone? Someone else walks up and says, oh, will you train me? Yes, for sure. Well, that might be a fucking 19-year-old bird, 50-year-old bloke, or someone in between. Three very different marketing messages, three very different reasons for doing it, even though the diet and exercise is pretty much the same. So same product, different reasons for having it, different sales message, and a different price. The 19-year-old girl is not going to want to or be able to afford the same as the 50-year-old bloke, for the most part. That's simple. So figure out who you want to sell to. Second thing is you figure out what exactly what their problem is. So is this a fucking 19-year-old girl? Is this a fucking 50-year-old year old bloke? Or is it, is it someone in between? Right? Well, people never buy anything except to solve a problem. 
And it's up to you. If you want to make the big bucks and get the best people, you need to figure out what that fucking problem is, what keeps them lying awake at night staring at the ceiling, and how you can solve it. And, what, and not just, oh, I, I, I help you with, with your workouts and your diet or the equivalent thereof in fucking construction terms, but what do you actually do? I mean, if you, if you build an extension, are you building an extension? So you've got another room in your house, increased value, or, or are you providing your father's final home in his last few years as he, as he goes into dementia? A very different thing. Same product, a different reason for doing it. You know? So you, you, who are you selling to and what the problem is? You know? And then exactly what are you selling? That's the problem. What are they selling? What are you selling to solve it? Because most people are selling their thing. Some people sell the results, but the best thing you're selling is the outcome. So what's their pain? And what is the outcome when you you solve their pain? It's not just a cessation of pain either. It's the higher level stuff. Now, they'll say things like, you, uh, you don't go to home base to buy a drill. You buy the hole in the wall. No, you don't. You buy the good feeling you get from looking at the photograph of your children and your grandchildren on the photo, hanging on the rural plug, in the wall, the drill drilled. And those good feelings are a job well done. I brought up two kids, three kids, and I've got grandchildren now. Full, you know, it's gone full circle. That's what you're fucking selling. Not yeah. the hole, not the raw plug, not the picture on the wall. It's the feelings you get after it. Uh, fourth thing is then once you've done all that, okay, you need to start building a sales pipeline. So you need to be attracting the right people, seducing the right people once they're in your world and then selling to them. You know, our fucking model that some of you may have seen, three circles with a nine accelerator on the outside, attract, seduce, and sell. A three-step process has to happen in that order. Anyone who's missing, if you're not attracting, you just got shitty clients because you just take what comes. If you're not seducing, you've got shitty prices because you're just selling to the people who want to buy and they, they always want to buy on price because you've not given them the good reason to shag you and not someone else, so to speak. And if, of course, if you're not selling, you're not getting any money because you're not selling. You know, I know loads of people who won't sell. They make all kinds of bullshit excuses for it. Things like, oh, yeah, we like to build relationships first. We like to give value. Well, the reason people give fucking value is because they take chicken shit, lily liver, to fucking sell it. Wankers. Um, and then, of course, you need a plan to make it happen. It's all very well and good saying, let's do this, let's do that. We've got this idea. We know who we're selling to, we know what we're selling, we know what problem we're fucking solving. Um, we know exactly what that does for them. We've got a sales pipeline. Or we've got, you know, it conceptually, but we don't actually have anything. We need a plan to do it. Because all these busy fools, these busy contractors, subcontractors, as we've had with one or two of our guys recently until we slapped them on the wrist and made them talk to us every week, literally sit down with us for a half an hour every week to tell us what they've done, accountability, like naughty schoolboys. Um, they're too busy to do the work. You know, they're too busy on shit work to sit down and make plans, proper plans to get out of that. But here's the thing, they're in a cycle. They're in a cycle of shitty work, shitty prices, which means they need to get more and more and more work in. You can't get out of a cycle. You can only break a cycle. And often to break a cycle requires outside intervention. Some cunt like me and Connor come along with a big stick, slapping you with it and saying, this is not good enough. You do not do it this way or else. And of course, the last thing, the sixth thing you need to do is you need to execute that plan. Step by step, one, two, three. Success, I mean, some of you may have seen a, a, a video of me going around the internet recently. Um, it's certainly on LinkedIn. It's, it's my, my mate, Phil, he, he, with my permission, he took loads of little videos I've done over the years. Oh to, God, fuck You've seen it, haven't you? Yeah. It's no, a dramatic, it's dramatic fucking music to it. And basically it's gone from squishy to six pack at 52 in five months. Um, it's a great little video. He's got loads of business from it. Now for me, the, the important thing about that video isn't that I actually did that. And that's, don't get me wrong, it's great. I mean, the chicks love it. Um, and so do the gay guys. That's even better. But the, the really important thing about that video is not what I did in terms of results. The really important thing about that video is the meta stuff, how I did it. Not in terms of exercise and diet. Here's the thing. I chose or I was given some simple exercises to do and a routine a simple diet to follow and a routine, you no know, regime, and then I did it. It's that simple. Simple steps carried out over a period of time, day in, day out. Well, that's all it is. It's the same with dieting and building muscle as it is in business. Success in business is no different. You, you, you pick your fucking regime, you pick your, 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 your steps, and you repeat them day in, day out. 
I mean, I, I went from being really squishy to well, you've seen the fucking photos. I put on a I put on a stone of muscle at 53. Well, between 52 and 54, I put on a stone. That's a fucking big achievement. So because uh, I was always quite muscular as well. So it's not like I was stick thin. And again, it was nothing special. It was just here's your fucking box of tricks. Do this every day. Well, this is what we do with in foundations and with main build. You know, here's your fucking things. Do this every day. And, and when people do it, it's I, I know it's hard to believe. When people do it, it works. Fancy that. So that's how you get. That's how to attract the best clients. Simple. Those fucking six steps. There's. I'll shut up for a minute, and you can talk. Cause I'm tired. <laughs> 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 you're a fucking liar you're not tired <laughs> you just talk and talk and talk it, this is why i find this podcast so easy i just wind you up and then let you go and you're like those pair of teeth with legs <laughs> well, the thing is i know what i'm talking about i mean they, they say it takes you 800 hours to become an expert 10 no 800 hours to become competent and 10,000 10, hours to become an expert. Yeah. Well, if you think about that, I've probably put in 30 or 40,000 hours of this. More, I, I don't, I've lost count. I don't count. I've, you know? I could I've, I've, I've never agreed with that, though. Well, whether you agree or not isn't the point. It's a fucking fact. I mean, it's the, they've done research. I don't think it is a fact. Your personal fucking anecdote is irrelevant. The point being, okay, let's, let's, let's forget fact. the numbers. Let's not argue about this because you're wrong. But no, seriously. <laughs> Whether or, I don't, I don't know either. I mean, I've not, I didn't do the research. I've not validated it, so no, I'm, I'm just taking it face of it. But the point well, is, to become an expert requires study, concentrated study over a long period of time. But I think you'd agree with that and practice, Execution. and practice. Yeah, and I've been doing this day in day out, sales copywriting, talking about sales, thinking about sales, talking about marketing, teaching it. For, I've been teaching it for at least ten to twelve years. I've been doing it for probably eighteen. Something's probably stuck. I mean, I can get up there. Someone could say to me, oh, I want you to get up there now and talk for an hour on lead generation without any notes. I could do it without even thinking about it. But well, well, when you can do that. Like, <laughs> yes, exactly. I John, it's, it's almost like we know what we're talking about. Almost. Almost. I, uh, what, what, while she was spieling on, I went on to Phil's page. If any of you fat fuckers are listening and you're tired of your fat fucking belly, uh, message Phil, top bloke. Yeah. Top like Phil underscore Agostino on Instagram or Phil Agostino on Facebook and LinkedIn. He's got a podcast as well, hasn't he? Mature Muscle. Yeah, I've, I've never listened to it. I, I hate podcasts. No, I've never listened to them. Me neither. I like a podcast, but uh, I know you I do. Like, I, don't. I don't. I don't I mean, like I, podcasts. I need to cancel my Audible accounts. I never use it. Literally never use it. I've gone completely off um, audiobooks. I, I have no idea why. They used to be my bread and butter, but I've completely gone off them. That's the autism, mate. That vaccine, that's what it will be. <laughs> Is that it? <laughs> anyway, we're digressing. Oh, yeah. That was a digression off a digression off a digression. We've been um, told off about that, haven't we? Fucking by our clients, of all people. Lick me from roots to cleft, as we say. Yeah, yeah. And to our clients that are listening to this, yeah, fuck you, yeah? Yeah, fuck yeah. you. I regret asking for your opinion. You listen to us. Piss off. Anyway. Well, <laughs> now that, there's your mistake, you see. Do you ever hear me ask our client their opinion? No, and I see I, your well, face. Well, that's deliberate, mate. I, that's deliberate. I, I, I saw your face when I asked the foundation. <laughs> uh, you just completely went switched off, blank face. That's not interesting. Cap down. Not uh, interesting. Yeah, so fuck off. It's, yeah, if, if this was all business, yeah, you wouldn't fucking listen. Yeah, oh, even give, though you're here. Give us your money, do as you're told, and shut up. That's that yeah. simple. Right, anyway. Carry on. anyway. Uh, I went on to Phil's page. You, you got a few a few women commenting on that video, and a couple of them look happily married. Oh, yeah, but come on, dude. I mean, I'm irresistible. You're, I know it. There's two kind of, there are two kinds of fucking women in the world. There are women who wet their gussets over me and find me irresistible, and then there are women with poor taste or lesbians. That's it. Lies. You know it's true. I mean, some of them argue about it and, and lie and pretend they don't. Of course they fucking do. What's not to love? <laughs> Who wouldn't want both inches of my cock inside of me? Who would have thought your shit All two of them. a home wrecker? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> fucking shit pack. So anyway, I've, got two, I've got two inches here and I'm not afraid to use both of them. A deadly weapon. I, th I think what I was trying to say before we ended up on this, <laughs> we, we, well, when I say we, uh, you announced to me 
today that uh, you want to start giving away our business accelerator. Yes. I and do. In the business accelerator, it pretty much covers and absolutely fucks the shit out of those six points plus more shit. Yeah, it does. Yeah, there's five, five, five minute videos and accompanying PDFs of some of the, the varying lengths. Um, very short the videos are and I recorded them on a five on a on a one mile walk saying so five lots of five minutes it's that quick but it's extremely powerful I'd almost forgotten we've got it yeah um, me too we had cl- we, uh, quite a few people in foundations joined us uh, after yeah. re- doing it well going yeah. through the process and some of them it was part of the many things they looked at before they joined us so yeah. if you're skeptical about me and John in in the fucking slightest go to the uh where's it being held we've got a web page or is it going into Facebook? Uh, at the minute it's on um it's quite a long thing I'll tell you what we'll do uh we'll stick it in the comments below we'll put the url in there because at the moment it's on <laughs> evilboldgenius.com forward slash business hyphen accelerator yeah, no one's going there. Art, hyphen one then two then three then four then five in roman numerals roman numerals so it's not exactly something that trips off the tongue so we'll put them somewhere better. Um, well, we'll put it in the Facebook group because yeah, all right. I... Put it, okay, put it in the Facebook group, and that's that's uh, just go to ittcontraceptive.com and it. No, it's ittcollective.co.uk and get in or... the Facebook group, and you can have you can have the business accelerator. I mean, I could sell it; it's worth selling, but we'll give it away for free. Yeah, because we like that. Because we're nice. Because we're good. Uh, or you can when you're on Facebook, because no doubt you. you you lot listening are a procrastination bunch of motherfuckers because you're not in foundations watching get shit done uh you can whilst you're on facebook pull your finger out and type in the ott collective and uh you'll see the group there there's about 600 members in there at the moment so uh or or message one of us on linkedin it will say it's fucking don't message i won't fucking reply because i'm nice like that I don't check them. Don't, 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 don't ask us for advice because you just get laughed at, but we'll, we'll give you this shit for free. Mate. Don't mind doing that. Anyway, where were we? Where were we? Yeah, yeah if you, well, if you want to... It's, it's, it's shit out there in the, the world of construction. There's is, a ton of work. Shit. Yeah. And, uh, the, well, I tell you what, the smart business owners will realise it's shit out there because they'll recognise that, well, hang on a minute, I've got all of these opportunities of work, but fuck me, the margins are low. That's what the smart ones will say. There's going to be a lot of people listening to this that, uh, you know, they have their own construction companies and they, they, they think they're laughing with the amount of work coming their way because they do not understand their numbers and they do not understand proper pricing. If you are one of those people that have all of a sudden found yourself busier than ever, yeah, and you think, of, oh, th- this is amazing. Look at your fucking numbers because you, you, could be, you could be working yourself to bankruptcy. It happens. Yeah, yeah, we, we spoke we spoke to a bricky, didn't we, about a year ago now, before the COVID thing. Was no, it was just when it, it was just when it was kicking off because he wasn't sure about what was going to happen. That's why he didn't yeah. join it. It was turning nice over. Bloke. It was tu- it was lovely bloke. <laughs> it was turning over. Was a brick wall, John. His profile picture was a brick wall. <laughs> he was so proud of his work. It was a fucking brick wall. But it, but it was turning over more than a million a year, and he didn't know if he was profitable or not. Mm. That's even worse than knowing you're not profitable. He didn't yeah. know because I said to him, what, what was your profits per month? He said, I don't know. Well, that's the big problem. I mean, I'd be rather turning over 100K a year and making 10K profit than turning over a million a year and making a 10K loss. I just would. Not only would it be less work, but hey, you're actually making a fucking profit. But people are they're too worried about their competition. That's what it, a lot of it is. Because they'll see that, well, you know, the guy down the road has dropped his prices, so we'll drop our prices too. What tends to happen then is that you drop your prices, competition drop theirs. Things tend to then even out, so you get the same amount of business long term, only you're being paid less to do it. So everyone's working harder, everyone's working for less money, and all the clients are suffering because you can't deliver top quality at low price. That's the danger of a, of a price war. Price wars, no one wins them. They're, they're a pyrrhic victory. You end up harming yourself even if you win. Mm-hmm. And also, often even the client suffers in price war. Absolutely, yeah. Nobody wins a price war. Nobody wins a price war, at least of all the fucking clients. Now, here's a very simple way to eliminate the worry of competition. Now, my, my words are very carefully chosen there. I'm not saying how to eliminate your competitors. Yeah, because we're not into this fucking macho style of marketing where you 
kill it, crush it, destroy your competition. I I'd rather bollocks. I used to do, you know, I, I'm a I'm a karate, not a karate, I'm a jujitsu guy. Now, jiu-jitsu is very different to karate and things like taekwondo in that you don't meet the, the, the threat head on. You move out of the way and use the momentum against them. Well, I use the same approach to my competitors. I move out of their way, let them get on with it. All right? And that's very simple. And it's very simple to, to sum up. Don't compete with people. Just create. Meaning, do your own thing. Invent your own systems, your own ways of doing things. Be, I hate to use this fucking way, I'm going to do it. May God strike me down. Be authentic. Yeah. Be yeah. yourself. Have, have your own values, and this this also comes into the work we do in, in Kickstart. Have your own set of values, things you stand for, things you will not tolerate, things you will tolerate, not, not just in others, but in yourself too. Be somebody. You know, so, somebody to, to re, who's respected. And in that case, you, you don't have, we don't have any competitors because nobody does what we do in, in quite the same way, uh, with the same attitude or, or even the same results. So I, I'm quite happy. To, to, to talk to other marketers in the same industry. Um, I don't educate them, but I'll, I'll kind of have a conversation. And it's not like we, we hedge our bets and hide our stuff from them because we don't want them finding out because they might copy it. They can yeah, fucking good luck with that. We I don't have any competitors. We refuse to acknowledge them. They're just not there. You know? Yeah. They're just not. I'd, I'd, I'd send them our shit if they wanted it that bad. If they yeah, I would. Kindly. Because they'll never understand it. And even if they did, it doesn't matter. Because if they copied it the way, if they copied it, meaning they, they implemented the same stuff in their own way, it would be so different from ours. It would still work, but it would be different from ours in a way that means we still wouldn't be competing. That's the whole fucking point. You know, that's what all, that's what real authenticity is. So, you know, don't don't compete with people, create. I remember that, that, is, that is another way, by the way, for anyone who's paying attention to any of this, that is another way of saying stay in your own lane. Mind your own business. Yeah. Focus on your actions, your behaviours, and your thinking, not other everyone else's. Because they're all thinking, we need to go in at a low price. Yeah. We have yeah. to do what everyone else is doing. No, you don't. In fact, it's not, not only you not need to do what everyone else is doing, you really don't want to be doing what everyone else is doing, because you all look the fucking same. You, you end up being like Tina. Everyone knows how different teenagers are. Can you ask them? They'll fucking tell you. But they all look the same. Weird and different, like every fucking teenager ever. I remember at the the beginning of the first lockdown when it was all kicking off, um, we was growing at a very, very quick rate. And obviously our clients were all looking towards us, you know. Um, Leadership. We support, yeah. And we were supporting them. And then they also asked, you know, like, because uh, obviously... Our, our, our business isn't a fucking construction business. They they were like, well, w w what's your plans? And I said, well, our, whatever our plans is should be very similar to yours because your business isn't fucking different. Um, and our plan is to lead the market. And you should too. You know, we're going to create a set of materials. Uh, we're going to create webinars. We're going to create this, that and the other in order to lead the market. Uh, but we behaved as if, anybody who was listening was our client. I, I can't, looking back, I don't know how we worked so hard to pump that much shit out. We was doing, we was going live like three times. Oh, no, we was going live every day in the Facebook. I was going every, live every day, yeah. Yeah, we was doing trainings every week. Um, you, know, you know what we were doing, don't you? We were pivoting. We were <laughs> pivoting. What, what, <laughs> it, no, we, we, we yanked on the fulcrum or whatever the saying is that we no, came we, up we led. We led. We became but, leaders. But we did that by creating. We, we just yeah. created, we created, we created, and we put ourselves in, in, in our own lane. And we had boiler installers and plumbers and whatnot asking, well, what, what do we do? Uh, and we said, well, your, your clients are just as human as you are, and you're our client. You know, yeah. They're, they're going to need somewhere to look at. And if you're helping these people through it, and you're giving ad advice outside of boiler advice, for example, they're never going to go anywhere else ever again. No, they, they, Dan Kennedy's, again, he passed on the, 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 the quote from someone else. I don't remember the original source, even if Dan gave it. He said, people are walking around with an umbilical cord in their hand looking for somewhere to plug it in. At times like that, with, when COVID kicked off, and, and right now as well, in times are tough, people look for leadership. And if you step into the, the, the shoes of a leader, people will follow. Now, 
true story we we go out the country sometimes i take the dogs down in this airbnb it's been kerry it's lovely but no it is we no we're still in cork actually it's, it's, it's fucking beautiful it's it's superb and the first time we went to this place my colleague is quite nervous but she's she's definitely my dog she she adores me she follows me everywhere she she lay on the sofa in this this new house and she's constantly looking at me out the corner of her eye and she's checking with me basically asking am i okay is this okay she's looking to me for leadership of the pack well your clients are like that you, you know they're like children and dogs they require a leader and if you don't step into the this the shoes of a leader somebody else will and often like a dog they might not be equipped to you know they say if you don't take control of a dog they can turn nasty because they're not equipped to lead a pack in a human society they're just not same as children. If you're not in charge of your children, if your children do not know who's, who's in charge, they will run rings around you and they will turn out to be shitty human beings because they've not had proper leadership. Well, similarly, your clients want leadership. They, they've got a problem. We go back right to the front of what we said. Your clients have a problem. They want you to say, it's going to be okay. I can, I can solve this for you. I can take this problem away for you. That's how you get the best clients. That's how you get the best rates. Not, yeah, I can fit you a boiler or... Yeah, I can, I can help you with these machines in the diet. That's not doing it. It's, yeah, we, we, I can make you attractive again to your, to your wife. I know you've been jilted by your husband. True story, you know. Woman jilted by her husband, left her a younger model. She was fat and overweight. She went to a PT. And her thing that drove her forward was this, this kind of scenario in her head, going to the local nightclub. There's only one in the town. Into the local nightclub. A, her ex-husband would see her there in a little black number. She looked fantastic in her his new girlfriend was now very heavily pregnant and he would think shit what have i done that was what drove her forward that was her outcome well your clients they've all got that kind of level of of, of problem they want solved and that kind of itch they want scratching that kind of pain they want taking away it's up to you to find it and to say to them i'll take care of you i'll lead you trust me that's what we do that's why we get the big bucks yeah so create do not compete and going back to the lockdown thing people that, that, that fucking rush of people selling their services at hundred pounds. Oh, what was that? Or nothing. About? Oh, I don't fucking no. The thing is, Jesus. I'll pay you a hundred quid not to sell me something for a hundred quid. Like, <laughs> just fuck off. You see, I mean, you can't help others. I mean, virtue, virtue, selfishness is a virtue. Oh yeah, okay. absolutely. I'm talking about righteous self selfishness here, not the kind of selfishness say my ex would display where it's what's mine is mine and what's yours is mine too. And I want all of it and I'm not going to pay my debts. That's not the kind of selfishness I'm talking about. I'm talking about the selfishness of saying no, the selfishness of saying, no, I'm not okay with that. I need to be okay. So then I can help you be okay too. It's the airplane mask. Analogy. Uh, absolutely. You know, you're no good to your children if you are fucking dying of anoxia yeah, and they're I... dying of anoxia too. Well, in the same way as I can't help people in my business, free or at a lower price or in how, however I want to do it charitably, I can't do that if I'm struggling for money. I'm struggling yeah. too then. It's like trying to save someone from quicksand by jumping in with them. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Like you throw them a rope. Yeah. <laughs> or a life raft or something. You do not go in after them. That's fundamental. You don't mm -hmm. jump in the water to save a drowning man unless you're a fucking expert. Well, I'm not. That's not my job. In the same way as we, we can't help people in business by jumping into the swamp they're in. That's yeah. not how it works. Not unless we want them to clamber over us and drown us in the process. No, thank you. It ain't that kind of fucking party. I remember where I, I hadn't been with my uh, girlfriend for a very long time. And um, I don't know how we ended up on the topic of this conversation. Um, but it was something along the, the lines of, you know, I come before everyone no one will ever be more important to me than me she uh, said that was the problem with you <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, we got together when we were very young uh she was 18 i was 70 Ooh. and um, she's she's only in the last year finally grokked what i mean by that and it, you know, it's the same as all of these fucking shit gurus say you know um you can't make someone else happy before you can make uh, yourself happy along those lines. But you've always got to be putting yourself first. You have to be fucking selfish. Yeah, I, I hate the fact that selfish is a bad word. 
Like when someone says to me, "You're self," well, well, of course I'm fucking selfish. Very selfish. It's the difference is we admit it and we open with it, and we're okay with it. You know, even altruists they get something from what they do. Altruists they get the pleasure of doing a good turn. And have you noticed how nasty they can get when you don't take their advice or you you, you spurn them? Oh, it's awful. It's awful. Huh? They're, they're it's just like rotten. People on, people on LinkedIn, the nauseating fucks who, who do a good turn and have to post about it. I was walking down the road and I saw a homeless person gave me some money. Well, I hate great, that. I great. Fucking Why the hate fuck do you have to tell me about it? I'm not interested, you piece of shit. It doesn't make you a good person. I, I know there's... I know tons of stories that I could share about you, and I know you know a handful about us, a handful of things about me of just various bits and bobs that we do. But th- th- we would. I feel, my, I feel almost no dirty comment. mentioning it now. I make no comment, no comment, no comment. Exactly. I feel almost dirty bringing it up now, but it just disgusts me that it's, and it's like those, video it. I was about to say those viral video people. Oh, man. You piece I, of shit. The, the, the stance I take on that is fair like you, you're you're a cunt you're a piece of shit but if it takes a camera for you to be a better person well at least the the person who's suffering benefits from you being such an altruistic awful it's shit work. <laughs> yeah it's it's a joke so I, I i'm in shock that being selfish is deemed a bad thing and when i say that I, yeah if there's one muffin left yeah at one of our meetings I'm not going to deprive one of our clients having it because I'm selfish. No, it's not what I mean. That's not that. what we mean by selfishness. Not you what don't we need mean. that nothing. We, we don't think that's selfish. We just think you're you're an you know an insensitive, inconsiderate. We twat. also get something from it. You get pleasure from it, and, and you probably get some kind of material reward in the sense you perhaps get slightly better. You, you get viewed more favorably by your client. Yeah, by and so down. you are getting something from it. So in that respect, it is selfish. What, we're, what we don't do is martyr ourselves. And no, you have it. I'll be fine without the muffin. Hey, uh, no, I'll tell you what, you're spot on there. Well done for pointing that out. We are being selfish by saying, by almost not being selfish. <laughs> everything you do is not, so everything you do is selfish. When you, when even, I'll tell you what, even us doing our good deeds <laughs> and not telling people, we're being selfish because ultimately yeah, we're doing it God. for the, those warm, fuzzy feelings. When we took Zach to dinner, that was selfish because in return for dinner and a few beers, we got so much information to blackmail him with. So much blackmail. So yeah, much blackmail. He'll never dare leave us now. He'll be paying us forever because he just won't dare leave us. Well, that was selfish of us. Small investment in dinner and beer, get him off his guard. We got all this fucking dirt on him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Imagine how much more we, we could have got if uh, he wasn't worried about driving. Are you listening to this, Zach? I hope so. He will be in his, in his, <laughs> in his fucking van. Yeah. Keep getting those big jobs. Keep paying us, mate. Your fees going up again next week. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Looking forward to your kitchens again, selling for fifty odd grand. Oh yeah, yeah. See, it's the thing I like about that is not just that he's a really nice bloke and we all get on, but he just fucking does the shit. He listens. I've been doing this for this mentoring lot for probably eight nine years now with the inner circle. If you count that. Um, which is which is legit. You count that, I suppose. Um, and and the elite thing is about seven years. The thing I've noticed from day one, and it's obvious, really, and I shouldn't need to point it out, but I do. The people who've always got the best results are the people who listen the most, argue the least, and then actually do the work. Funny. That's funny. I it it is funny, it, and it is obvious, isn't it? It really is so obvious. It shouldn't be, need mentioning, but it does because. People join us sometimes and they do nothing. They don't even interact with us and then say it's not working. Well, no, it's not. You're right. But that's because you've not even spoken to us in six months. Yeah. And, and the, the times that we, we, we had, it was on the call this morning, there's one particular guy who, who, who came on a few weeks ago. Do you remember? He came on a few weeks ago and he'd been struggling with something for three or four weeks. Yeah. And within 10 minutes of speaking to me, I, was, I said, well, here's your problem. And I fixed it for him. He says, shit, why didn't I do this before? I don't know. Why didn't you do it before, you fucking moron? Mm. It's what you pay yeah. us for. Idiot. It's, it's strange. You uh, know who you are if you listen to this. They will. We, we, we've had a handful of clients who join us and they listen and they listen intently and they turn up and they turn up and they turn up. And all of a sudden, shock horror, their business starts doing better. 
and yeah. they feel more knowledgeable they feel more confident they feel better as a person often they feel like a completely different person and um so they start turning up less and less and less and less and then we'll go hang on a minute where the fuck is this geezer we'll reach out they'll get in touch we'll have a call turns out all of a sudden they've got all of these problems some they didn't realize some they didn't <laughs> their uh, their profits yeah. are now lower when they were when versus when they were talking to us frequently and always always we fix their problem there and then this is where there then becomes two types of clients one type of client goes back to being a fucking idiot yeah and they stop coming back and they stop checking in and eventually they go i leave i'm thinking about leaving and it's like hang on a minute you fucking prick look at the state of your business when you joined us look at the state of your business when, when you listen to us yeah and you've decided that you, you've got a little bit too arrogant that you don't need to come as often as you you were and now you want to leave you do what you want buddy but if you can't see the, the issue there you're I, a fool. Yeah. The, you know you, you came to us you had a problem you didn't completely fix it, and now it's it's just where you back you back to where you were. What makes you think you can do it on your own this time? You didn't do it before. If you, you know, if you, I'll say to anyone who's been with us or not been with us, you know, if you're just thinking about it, if you could fix these problems you've got, the low price, the shitty clients, the the lack of pipeline, if you could fix this problem on your own, you'd have done it by now, or you yeah, wouldn't be listening. Wouldn't be to listening. Podcast. No. no, the fact that you're listening to it suggests that unless you're a client already, which is a bit different, if you're not a client already. You're listening to this because you figure we might know something you don't. And guess what? You're fucking right. But there's a thing called regression to the mean. When you when you leave, you know, it, it was I think it was Jeff, well, it's attributed to Jefferson, but it what it was other people too, I believe, who said the 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 price of freedom is eternal vigilance. Well, the price of anything is eternal vigilance. The price of, of staying slim, staying lean, being muscular, being healthy, having a decent business is eternal vigilance. Because you, if you take your eye off these things, you'll slip into the same behaviours that are habitual. And they're the behaviours that got you to where you were, which is where you didn't like it. You know, But those behaviours got you to the point where you said, fuck, I need to change this. Let's go speak to John O'Connor or go to a PT or, or join the fucking Alcoholics Anonymous or whatever, or the fucking Mormons, I don't know. Whatever it was that drove you to take action is where you'll end up again. And with rare exceptions, some people do change permanently. Most do not. Yeah. I, I go and see a fucking psychotherapist because I, I know if I don't, I will start going into the, the kind of behaviours that were damaging. I, I drink too much if I'm not careful because it's a way of dealing with anxiety when I'm in busy places. You know, if, if I let, if I, if I take my own eye off my own ball, I will regress to my own mean in these things. I don't do it in business because I've been doing it for so fucking long. It is big. This is a habit. Don't do the exercise because again, exercise is now a habit. But things like that, I, I still need to keep my eye on the ball. You know, I'm not different from anyone else in there. It's just fucking crazy. Anyway. No, 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 no. I didn't talk about the other type of client because I said No, you didn't. Point. I beg your pardon. It's all right. So we got that one and they always regress to the mean. If you imagine your, and for those that aren't watching, they're, they're, there's a wooden peg here. Yeah. And you're an elastic band and you're on this wooden peg, but you, you, you're trying to get to our wooden peg and it's over here. If you're talking to us often, yeah, you're firmly wrapped around our wooden peg yeah, and we're holding you close to our wooden peg. But the minute you stop talking to us, you slowly, slowly, slowly regress to that mean. But the other type of client, they turn up even when they haven't got problems because they know we can spot problems before they realize it. They come because they enjoy it. They enjoy learning more about marketing. They come because there's the opportunity. They might learn something off someone else's questions or problems so they can future proof themselves. There's, you know, there's people in our foundations group that turn up every fucking week uh, to the Q and A's, well, bi-weekly, and we're about to introduce something else to make it every week. Um, you know, Nathan, we've got James that turns up every week. Um, we've got uh, Starbuck. We've we've got Cullen now. Claire, um, we got Claire turns up every week. They're, 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 these people do not go unnoticed, and because I see their faces and their names every time we put something together, I know they're fucking serious. So when when I see them on Facebook. Yeah, I notice them that that little bit more, and I also notice how much better their business is growing versus those that don't turn up. It, yeah. You know, in, in Mainville, we talk about uh, Zach often, but that's just because he's he, he's exemplary. He's always fucking there. He's exemplary. Yeah. He, he's an example to follow. Kevin and Vicky, how long have they been following you now? 
oh, 10 years. They still turn up every fucking day. And look at the, I mean, Kev charges 10 times the going rate for accountancy work. Kev doesn't take on an accounting clients anymore. Very rarely he does, but he charges 10 times the fee. That's because he's followed me and he can, he knows how to do it. Same as Vicky. Yeah. It's it's just a money when she left us. She was saying that she'd be working at 25 quid an hour if she wasn't working with us. Now she's doing 10 times that with ease. Mm. And, you know, I'm feeling, I'm trying to wrap my brain to think if I've forgotten anyone. There's Mr. Banyard as well, who turns up um, frequently. Uh, I I tell you what, I'm not going to make anyone. They, 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 they don't turn up too much nowadays, but they do listen. They talk to me every week. Oh, yes. Uh, uh, you know, so, and I message Drew on WhatsApp. So it's basically there's people who fucking do the do the work, they get the results. But those that realise, even though they've done the work, yeah, and they've achieved a result and their profits are higher, they're much happier, their business is a lot easier, yeah, they still turn up. People let their egos get in the way. People let excuses get in the way. And it's frustrating to see, especially because we, I know lots of people say this, but I know we mean it when we say it. We're really not overly asked about the money. No, it's nice, but I, 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 I'm, no, thinking, I want the money. I'm always thinking long term. Always, always. And I, I want the money, don't get me wrong, but I'm not overly fussed by it. We've never been one of those to, you know, ruthlessly break down the numbers ruthlessly squeeze every penny we can everywhere we just charge high fucking prices and then give you a lot because uh that makes our life a lot easier you pay us actively, <laughs> pay you, you get unlimited access basically it just makes it a lot lot easier um but when a client leaves the money's an afterthought often it's like that dumb prick yeah is just going to go straight back to what they're doing we, we've seen it uh we, we've seen previous clients start cutting prices uh we've seen their posts uh the the tone of their posts on various social media platforms change radically we we that's the biggest hallmark of someone that's lost the fucking plot yeah where when there's posts that i know for a fact that are making them money because they tell me it's making them fucking money and they're sucking me off from the calls and then they leave and then all of a sudden they're going what's your favorite fucking ice cream yeah yeah I, I, it's, it's pitiful really um I mean, I, there's going back, as you can imagine, over the, it's about 10, 10 years or so, maybe more since I did for, did my first inner circle and then the, the mentoring group had leaked after that, which mm-hmm. is seven or eight, seven years. Um, but I've got a lot of business owners I see even now on, on LinkedIn from years ago and Facebook from years ago who are struggling. And, and people who, who spoke to us and didn't come on board, of course, still pissing and moaning about the same problems they had and when they spoke to me two, three years ago and still haven't made any inroads into it, so. Yeah. Anyway, do you, do you want to know who those people can be as silly as? Uh, well, this is quite a harsh comparison, but uh, anti-vaxxers. <laughs> anti-vaxxers? Oh, no, no. <laughs> no one is as silly as an anti-vaxxer. Uh, it's very fitting for your one minute hate, considering I've had the vaccine. Well, it is, and my 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 thing this morning with the fucking swanning to the front of the queue with my McCulloch special operation, you know. <laughs> oh, anti <Special. laughs> Double O autistic. <laughs> anti vaxxers count me in. Oh, I'll do. I was at time. It's, uh, that, for those that watch this on YouTube, which is very few, you can get this on YouTube. Um, the reason the camera angle is different is because I'm on me uh, iPad today. I've had a nightmare with me iP- uh, AirPods Pro, so I had to whack up the old iPad. Uh, so bear with me. There we go. I've got the timer on my phone. Um, yeah. I need to get a new one. I- I'm going to get the Mini, I think, John. Because the what? screen cracked. The iPhone Mini. Oh, right. <laughs> but anyway, that's a conversation we'll have after. <laughs> so what are you telling me for? Anyway. Right. I don't know why I'm telling you. Can't you don't have access to the bank accounts. <laughs> oh, I do. <laughs> uh, ready? Three, two, one, go. Anti-vaxxers, right? The, the, mo- the most pertinent ones are these fucking anti-vaxxers who are not going to take the COVID vaccine. So you've got maybe 
how many adverse reactions have we had? Maybe 20 adverse reactions in what have been millions of doses so far all around the world. And they're more concerned about that than they are about the fucking hundreds of thousands and millions of people who have died from COVID itself. It is a couple of orders of magnitude more dangerous to have COVID than the vaccine, okay? Worse than that are people who think that vaccines cause things like autism. They say, well, we don't know what's in the vaccine. These same fucking people have got about big pharma buy stuff from the supermarket. They don't know what's in their food either. Uh, there's a label on it. There's a label on the fucking vaccine too. If you're not afraid, if you're afraid of big pharma, why are you not afraid of big fucking big food or big bridge? Because you don't have fucking bridges made either, do you? Or what's in your car? Big fucking car maker. Big seatbelt. Do you know how a seatbelt is made? No, but you still fucking use one, don't you? Because they save lives. Big seatbelt is dangerous. Don't wear your seatbelt. Are we there yet? We have, aren't we? Time. Oh, fuck. Fucking anti-vaxxers. Honestly, they are so stupid. Vaccines are the, the most vigorously tested and safest. They've got the best success of any any medical procedure. And still, these fucking dumb cockwombles. Oh, I'm not taking the butt thing. Fucking stupid. Do you have, do you have time I wish. To I this? wish they would die. Do you, have, do you have time to talk about this? or? Yeah, I'm right now. Right. I don't know what it is about this specific vaccine. Um, I think it might be because it's the first widely recognized vaccine that has been developed just the Pfizer uh, one. any of them any of the covid oh, vaccines okay. is the it's, it's the most well known for obvious reasons uh since you know i've been alive uh, or at least that i can recall i can't yeah, remember yeah, yeah. Everything so much yeah but we've not had the need for it in the same way before but it's been really strange because i i'm very careful with who i choose to associate with my friends and whatnot and you know, I'm fortunate enough, the, the, the people I'm friends with now, they're, they're, they're intelligent people. They genuinely are intelligent people. But even a few of them have been cautious and worried about this vaccine. And I've got no idea why. Um, they, they, they give excuses like, oh, it might have been rushed and this, that and the other. But they've got no you know, problem with any other vaccine. It's just this specific one. Yeah, they're just and, and these, are the same, these are the same people who buy, who buy white powder in a little baggie in a fucking nightclub toilet and snort it. They are. <laughs> Probably. Yeah. They are. And then, you know, in my rants, they don't know what's in food. The, yeah. There are labels. They don't know what the labels mean. And two, even if they do... They, they, there's no, they can't prove that what's actually in the food is what it says on the label. No, it's not a fucking vaccine. Vaccines are victims of their own success. My generation, I can just about remember my parents, well, I can remember my parents talking about polio and how devastating it was. Don't quite remember it myself, but it certainly when I was a kid, it was still people worried about it. And it, and it was like a fucking sense of relief that's gone. Your generation, anyone probably under 40, no knowledge of these things. In my lifetime, we had smallpox in the world. Not in England, but in the, in the world. I, I, I was inoculated against smallpox. We don't do it anymore because it's gone. Yeah, People these days have not seen the, the, the ravages of diphtheria, of smallpox, of polio, and all these easily preventable diseases that kill people horribly. Now, they, they just come out with all this bullshit about, oh, it's, it causes autism. No, it fucking doesn't. And even if it does, I'd rather be autistic than dead. I really would, you know? I agree with you. Um, but it's just ignorance. And and also, human beings do not handle risk very well. They, they will say, you know, the chances of dying from COVID, I, I'd say one in 100. I don't know what the actual number is, but say, say it's one in 100. The chances of dying or being injured by the vaccine is probably less than one in a million. So it obviously makes more sense to take the vaccine. But the thing is that this is crucially where it, where it kind of starts to fall apart. You don't purpose to go out and get COVID, but you do purpose to go and get a vaccine. So you can avoid the vaccine, even though you can't really avoid the COVID. So to these stupid people, these emotional fucking retards, it feels better to risk the COVID than to risk the vaccine which you can avoid it's no, it makes no fucking sense and they, these people say oh it was rushed how do they know they're not medical experts and then they'll say well i'm not going to trust the experts so, okay who will you trust well these doctors have said it's dangerous oh so you trust those medical experts because they will confirm your existing fucking bias but you won't you won't kind of 
towards the scientific consensus, there's a thousand doctors saying, no, it seems safe as far as we can tell the limits of testing. And one or two gynecologists, for instance, a guy gynecologist who was saying, oh, it affects the DNA. No, it doesn't. Messenger RNA doesn't go into the nucleus. That's where the DNA, DNA is. This woman is, she might be a medical professional, but she's fucking ignorant about these things. And why are people taking her advice? I'm ranting again, aren't I? This is yeah, how badly... Right. This is how bad it is with people. They are fucking stupid. And I wish, I fervently wish, I pray, dear Lord, I pray, the people who avoid the vaccine, I wish they would die. I wish that we could arrange it so they would be the ones who choke out their last alone on a ventilator in ICU. Unfortunately, that's not how it works. It's the people they know. It's the person on the bus. It's the old lady in the shop. Unfortunately, that's the case. And if you don't inoculate your kids and they suffer harm from any preventable disease you could have vaccinated against them against, you are a child abuser. That's it. That's neglect. You can't choose to not to feed your kids or give them any other kind of medicine. What makes you think vaccines are any different, you fucking potato? <laughs> that was anyway. almost another one minute hate for free. Yeah. Fucking double your money on that one. Yeah, that, that would be It's true. Been These people hate. are so stupid. Oh, God. oh, no. Oh, no. For some... as Siri... Don't do anything. I don't know why, but Siri got activated then. All right, it's gone. It's gone. It's on my home pod. It's, it's gone. Hey, Siri, connect to Pornhub. And Siri, do not do that. <laughs> You'll need to your iPhone first. <laughs> <laughs> that was on your end, not your Yeah, phone. I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, mate. Um, I, I tell you who else is an awful group. Those that go... Well, I look at the science and the science says, because they have no understanding of science, those that try and quote science and say, well, because they studied the science um, and they're against the vaccine and they're against COVID, yeah, I, well, the science can't be wrong. And they don't even understand what science fucking is. It, it, no. Fucking people get to these things with methodology. Just because someone's a doctor doesn't mean they can also be, a, they can't be a fucking idiot. Yeah, well, that, the, there, a there classic example is that gynecologist. Because well, she's yeah, a medical yeah, expert, might. people think she's she's qualified to speak about vaccines. She's yeah. not. She's unequivocally wrong. Messenger RNA does not go into the nucleus. It cannot possibly affect your DNA. But they're a doctor. They understand well, the, the science. And then people who say things like, well, COVID is just an influenza virus. No, it's not. It only takes a five-second glance at the John Hopkins, which is a world-renowned medical facility, the John Hopkins pages, and they quite clearly say influenza is an influenza virus. Coronavirus is a coronavirus. You know? The common the cold is a rhinovirus. In the name. This, this is not difficult. This stuff is not fucking complicated. And like anything else, you know, you, you get your car fixed, you trust a mechanic. You get your roof fixed, you trust a roofer. You get your electric fixed, you trust an electrician. You get your marketing fixed, you trust us. You, you want your fucking health fixed or your vaccine, your, your immunity fixed, you go to someone completely fucking random, a warehouse manager on LinkedIn and listen to him. <laughs> you know? Yeah, but makes also, fucking sense to me. Also, those people that can say they know these things and whatnot, there are also stupid mechanics. There are stupid doctors. There oh. are stupid marketers. You have to be careful who you fucking trust. Yeah, just because someone has got a title does not mean they're an authority. That yeah. it, it's so easy. I almost laugh and I, I almost find it a little bit pathetic when I go on someone's website and they're shouting as seen in and then it's just a long list of all these things. <clears throat> it's like, I know for a fact, yeah, I've been offered to pay like 500 quid to write a shitty blog post for one of these so I can say as seen in. Yeah, yeah. It's not a stamp of authority. It really right. fucking isn't. You really have to be careful who you, you listen to. You also to. get some people saying they used to talk to doctor. A doctor. Yeah. And you find out, and they were making pronouncements on things like vaccines or, or diet and health. You find out it's a dentist. Yeah. Or a chiropractor. Or yeah. a doctor of fucking philosophy. It, you can yeah. be a doctor of anything. Yeah, a doctor of fucking stupidity. <laughs> anyway, we've got to wrap this up. It's been an hour and a half nearly. Yeah, but we only started recording 25 minutes in. So if we stop it now, it's pretty much been exactly an hour. An hour okay. and five seconds. That will do. That will do. Go on, John. Wrap it up for me. So after all this ranting, if you're still if you're still with us and you want help with your business, you want to make more money with less work, less hassle and fewer headaches and attract better clients, 
charge them higher prices, certainly higher than market rate, and have it all happen in the background, hands off on autopilot with a nice pipeline filled with lots and lots of yummy clients. All you've got to do is go to the OT, uh, sorry, ottcollective.co.uk, which will forward you to the Facebook group. Join that. Got loads of shit in there. More shit to come. Um, or email Holly, holly at growyourbusinessfast.co.uk, and she'll take care of you. Yeah, and, and that's if you're uh, serious about actually yeah, growing yeah, no, no tire kickers. Yeah, we're and not, you, you want our hands, our, you want a little bit more of our hands on help. I yeah, we're not, we're not here. It. In fact, I encourage you to look at things such as the business accelerator first. Yeah. Uh, as I said earlier, a lot of the guys that currently pay us, yeah, a nominal £250 a month that I'll give you straight back if you even make a noise of complaining. Yeah, yeah. they went through that. They saw the quality of the work. They, came, they, saw the they impact. saw they conquered. Well, they came, they saw they paid. Yeah. Yeah, and I want you to do the fucking <clears> same. So wherever, if you're sold now, message Holly, Holly at Grow Your Business Fast. Say, you know, info if you want the uh, the information on foundations. If you're a real maverick, say I'm in and she'll send you the link to fucking pay. But uh, if you want, you know, some free impact onto your business and you will want to try before you buy, get the business accelerator. Yeah. Just two things. One, no tire kickers, serious people only. And two, please don't email us for free advice because you won't get it. We'll laugh at you and you'll become a topic of one of our daily emails. And maybe a podcast if you persist. <laughs> yes. And if you really crack on, yeah, you, you'll go in our free newsletter that we send out to 500 people every month. And if you're that bad, you oh, go really? into our paid one. There's a thousand. What, on our free list? Yeah. Paper. Our sure free is. paper one. I thought it was a thousand. It's a lot anyway. We pay about 1,005. Oh, a month for this. See, this is how much we know our shit and marketing. We pay, we pay 1,500 to send people a free newsletter. You want that? Let me know. Right. Um, but uh, the numbers, the fact that we don't know our numbers and that is bad. Holly knows it. Holly, let us know. <laughs> <laughs> what we do anyway. know is it brings us business because people have told us. Exactly. Exacto <laughs> mundo. Okay, so that's it. We done. Oh, right. so, do, you, do your little moniker. I've done it. What, in the meantime? In the meantime, oh yeah, shit, sorry. That's in the meantime, stay, stay, stay inside, wash your hands, get fucking vaccinated, and do not shit on your fingers. See you later.